Go, go, Power Rangers! It's time for the sequel. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Pitch This here on the Mr. Eli Mac channel. I am your host, Mr. Eli Mac, and if you couldn't tell by that very musical intro, I am going to be doing the movie pitch for the sequel to my Mighty Morphin Power Rangers reboot, which I have titled Power Rangers Rise of the Dragon, or Rise of Dragon. I can't remember, I'm not looking at the picture right in front of me, but yes, this is the sequel that will introduce the Green Ranger into the movie franchise. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also hit the notification bell. That way you'll be notified whenever a new Pitch This episode goes up on the channel. So I think it was pretty obvious going into the first one that the sequel would be about introducing the Green Ranger, a.k.a. Tommy Oliver. And that's something that I very much was really hoping to accomplish with the entire franchise of trying to get the entire show of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers into movie form and so though the first two movies are very much dedicated to the first season of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the third one and the fourth one will very much be dedicated more towards a season two the season two and the season three aspects of the show so Without any further ado, let's get into the movie pitch for Power Rangers Rise of the Dragon. And so, I just want to go ahead and get this out of the way. Tommy Oliver is going to be introduced in this one. And I want it to be a fact right now that he is going to be played by an indigenous person. Because in the mythos of Power Rangers and the, in the history of Power Rangers, Tommy Oliver is is an indigenous person. I believe that was talked about and debuted in Power Rangers Zeo or Power Rangers Turbo. It was when Tommy was a Red Ranger when that was revealed. And so I want to fully like double down on that and very much established this is Tommy Oliver. I don't want to cast a white person. I want to cast an indigenous person for this role. And I think that would be very much beneficial to the character as well to have that backstory with the character also a little bit more on his backstory and such or the things that I will introduce in the movie is that Jason and Tommy actually know each other from the past because as I said in the first one Jason is very much dedicated to his time as like being in karate and that being a part of his character being an outsider well I'd introduce the fact that Tommy is someone that Jason knew. I know in the show, it was sort of like, oh, this is our first time meeting each other right now after um, competing against each other in a karate tournament. I don't want to do that. Instead, I want this one to be like the character of Jason and Tommy have known each other because of karate, and that's sort of how we get the relationship between them because I'm really wanting this movie and sort of the relationship between Jason and Tommy to be a... Captain America and Bucky Barnes sort of situation. I know we didn't have Tommy in the first one, so we really couldn't establish that relationship in the first one, but we will sort of establish that via flashbacks and character interactions that they have. But again, I also want the Green Ranger to sort of be the winter, a Winter Soldier-esque character where he's being manipulated by the bigger bad, being Rita with Winter Soldier being Hydra, and then it's sort of taking... Jason to sort of pull him out of that little evilness because that's what Cap sort of did with Bucky. He sort of used his goodness and his knowledge with and his relationship with Bucky to sort of pull him back to um, the good side. And that's sort of the relationship that I want with Jason and Tommy. Now, when it comes to the actual plot, the very sort of beginning of this movie is going to be the Power Rangers working together to take down a evil threat. I am I have a few like pitches that I want to do for the evil threat like the big like pig alien that swallow that eats everything. I sort of want him to be that villain. 
or another classic Power Rangers monster. Like, I want this to sort of be the moment where we see them work, that they have continued to work as a team for a few months or years, and that sort of, like, that's their stick now. They team up together, they fight the big monster, they find a monster, and then they go about their day being friends, and da 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 And then, that is when we introduce the karate tournament that is happening, and that's when we introduce Tommy Oliver. And that's when we establish, like, oh, Jason and Tommy have known each other, and that's when, sort of, Kimberly starts taking a fancy to Tommy, because Tommy is suave, Tommy is cool, Tommy can get women. It's that simple. And that's sort of the relationship that... Tommy and Kimberly will have. If we're doing a love story, that is sort of the story that we're going with. And sort of also during the time of the monster getting defeated in the um, early part, that is when the green power coin is affected. And that's when it starts being like, oh, the green power coin is getting closer to being discovered. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's work with this. Let's try to find it and that's sort of Rita's main thing is discovering like oh this power coin is actually being able to be discovered now so I've I want a monster created that way if I don't that way she doesn't have to sacrifice Goldar or Scorpina and instead she's sort of like let's try to make a monster that can track um where the green power coin is and sort of be someone that can help us with finding the power. And that is when we're introduced to the character of King Sphinx, who is sort of, who will sort of be like the heavy. Or if we if I have to continue with the um um Captain America anal um analogies, he's sort of the crossbones of the movie. Where Goldar is sort of gonna be taking a step back of being sort of the main henchman of the of Rita's. King Sphinx will be taking that role. And so King Sphinx and the putties would work together and they would find the green power coin very early on. And also around this time, this is when um, Tommy and the gang of Power Rangers are sort of getting to know each other and like sort of getting where Tommy is getting acclimated to working and being friends with the Power Rangers. And sort of when King Sphinx brings the power coin back to Rita, Rita tries to use the power for him. For herself she's like i have the power now i shall be the one to wield it yeah but nothing works and that's because rita slowly remembers that the power coin must choose its user sort of like how the other power coins chose the power rangers and this the same instance will happen with the green power ranger and so rita though she can't actually choose the user through the coin she instead she manipulates it and darkens it because she can do that and so with her darkening it she sends it out back onto earth to find the person that can wield the green power coin and that is tommy oliver as we all know but with that once he is given the power of the green power ranger that is when sort of the darkness and the manipulation of rita slowly takes over tommy and so, with that, that's when we start to seeing the darkness of Tommy Oliver start to come out. He doesn't know who the Power Rangers are because, unlike the show, I'm not going to have Rita know who the Power Rangers are. I'm just going to have it be one of those, oh, the Power Rangers exist. Whenever you see a Power Ranger, whenever you see someone in that Power Ranger suit, you attack them. And that's sort of the story behind this and sort of the Green Power Rangers starts... Wreaking havoc, wreaking havoc to um, take down the to find the Power Rangers, take down Angel Grove, and sort of help Rita take over the um, the the world. Honestly, and also for a little fan, for a little nugget for all the fans of the Power Rangers comic books, I'm going to have Rita rename the Green Power Rangers. So whenever he is in Green Power Ranger form, he's not just Green Power Ranger. I am the green power ranger and i'm just evil no instead she will give him another name sort of like how anakin skywalker is darth vader and darth vader is just a completely different name that's sort of what she's going to do with tommy and that's when he gets the name of dracon which for all the fans of the comics and the shattered grid and stuff 
that is Tommy Oliver's um, bad guy name when he like he has the power of the Green Ranger and he sort of is able to get the power of the White Ranger as well and he becomes Dracon and takes out everyone and becomes the ultimate ruler. That's sort of the direction. Like, that's what I wanted to give for the fans of that notion and also sort of like, oh, is this going to be a point where Tommy takes over and wins and becomes like the big bad? I just wanted to throw out all that stuff for fans of the multiple source material that exists. And so we continue with the movie of Tommy being the Winter Soldier-esque character of taking out taking out the Power Rangers. And that's when Jason starts noticing the changes within Tommy, even in his personal life. Jason would constantly try to mention the Tommy, like, hey, why don't we hang out and stuff. But um, Tommy, because of his evil facade, always says, no, we're not going to hang out together because I have stuff to do. And that's when, again, in the five-part Green with Evil in the um, actual TV show, that's when Tommy starts sort of showing a darker side. Instead of, like, holding back with Bulk and Skull, he goes a little bit, he fights a little bit harder than he should have. And that's when we start, that's when Jason at least starts realizing that, oh, I think Tommy's the Green Ranger. And it's not because he's wearing green, it's just the way he's acting and the way he seems determined to hate all the Power Rangers. It's one of those moments of Jason is able to find this out. And even Zordon, like after Zordon and Alpha, after hearing about this, that's when they're like, hmm, we'll do our little science reading. Do 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 oh yeah. Tommy's the Green Ranger and you need to stop him. And with Zordon sort of hinting at the fact of, you may need to destroy him because the power of the Green Ranger is horrific. Like the only way to defeat Green or the Green Power Ranger is to destroy the person that has that power. And Jason, though like maybe Zack and all them are like, all right, if that's what we gotta do, Jason's gonna be the one like, no, we can't do this. We can't let that happen because he's our friend. And Zack's like, but we heard what Zordon said. And Jason's like, I don't care what Zordon says. Well, there has to be another way. And that's when we sort of get the journey of Jason trying to pull, the, uh, pull Tommy out of the darkness and into the light. And so we go over to... We get closer and closer to the multiple fight scenes that the Power Rangers will have with the Green Ranger, with the Green Ranger constantly getting the upper hand, and King Sphinx even existing as well, sort of being a character that will help the Green Power Ranger at multiple points. And that's ultimately when, after doing a lot of research with Alpha, Jason discovers like, oh, there is a way to stop the Green Ranger. But at the same time, Rita slowly reveals like, to the Green Ranger like, hey, there's a reason why I was sent to Earth all those years ago. And that's when Rita tells Tommy about the Sword of Darkness. And she says that th that is the only weapon to truly take over the planet Earth. And so she sends Tommy to find the Sword of Darkness so that he can wield it to help sort of, to help Rita take over the planet. And when um, when Jason finds out about this, he tells Alpha that's like, I need to stop him. And Alpha again telling him, like, you are too, you are not, you can't do this alone. And Jason says, he's my friend, I have to do it. And so during the course of this, like, journey and adventure, Jason eventually finds Tommy the moment when Tommy finds the Sword of Darkness. And Tommy is outside of the suit, and Jason basically like, Tommy... You need to stop this. I know you're the Green Ranger. And you have to stop this. Tommy is like, I am doing this for my mistress. For my empress. And so he turns into the Green Ranger. And that's when Jason turns into the Red Ranger. And Tommy is like, oh. So it's been you this entire time. I should have known. And the two have this big old fight. And even Rita is basically like, King Sphinx, go, go help. Go help him. And that's when the other rangers come in, and it's sort of like a, two different battles of the other rangers versus King Sphinx and Jason versus Tommy. And so during the fight, Tom, Jason is able to get the Sword of Darkness away, and that's when Rita tries to help out and tries to teleport 
only Jason away into a different area. But Tommy gets to him first, and then the two teleport together into this, like, sort of... Sort of like in Green Candle, or maybe also in Green with Evil, sort of like this room where it's just a circle, and that's sort of where we see sort of where the corruption is, sort of like the s center of the corruption. And Jason even sees like a in stasis sort of Tommy, and that's sort of like the goodness in him. And so finally, like we get a final fight between um, Tommy and Jason inside of this prism. And Tommy basically has Jason beat, even though, like, it's Jason, it's sort of an even fight. It's sort of like harkening back to their karate tournament match, where it's very even. And that's sort of where Jason is able to keep, like, it even, because he's able to counter everything. And that, but ultimately, Tommy would get the upper hand, and he's ready to kill Jason. And Jason's like, look, I know who you are. You are Tommy Oliver. We went to this karate camp together when we were kids. We basically grew up together until you had to move away. And trust me, I know my friend would never do this. And as he's saying all this, he's sort of getting ready to attack some of the area and some of the evil mystic magic inside of it. And that's when he's sort of able to get Tommy back to himself and sort of writing everything. Also, I forgot to mention, during this period, we would also get a Dragon Zord versus Megazord fight with the Dragon Zord winning. I just wanted to mention that. That way, if anyone was wondering if we ever got that fight, we would get it. And sort of, Jason would be able to help Tommy get out of this stasis mode and overwhelm the corruption, ultimately getting Tommy to take himself back. And as the other rangers are sort of losing to King Sphinx, and King Sphinx is ready to kill the rangers, that's when Tommy and Jason would find a way back, and they would fight together. And Tommy, with the other rangers, would be able to defeat King Sphinx, and Rita would be beaten again. And ultimately, at the end, the Power Rangers would very much still be hesitant to work with Tommy, and Tommy says, I understand, so I'll go do some soul-searching. And when I, when I come back, I promise you, you will be able to trust me. And I will help you. And that's sort of how that story would wrap up. And then we would get sort of a mid credit tease of Goldar sending a message to someone. Saying, my lord, Rita has failed again. You are needed. And on the little pad, we would see just the letter Z. Sort of hinting that the third movie would have Lord Zed. And again, that is what, broad strokes, that is what would happen in Power Rangers Rise of the Dragon. We would have the history of Jason and Tommy. Again, I want their relationship to be very similar to Captain America and Winter Soldier, because I think that relationship, that friendship is sort of a great sort of, um, um, because I think that relationship is a very good base when it comes to a friendship in movies. Sure, it may not be 100% the greatest, but at the same time, when you see the relationship in, Win in Captain America First Avenger, then Winter Soldier, and then Civil War, I think that is a great relationship in terms of friendship. And I sort of want Jason and Tommy to have that because I feel like those two are very similar and I feel like those two would have very much a friendship and I also want it to very much hit hit the nail on the head of Tommy being an indigenous person like that's who I would cast I don't have any fan casts automatically in my head but that is what I would want for the sequel also I want to establish very much that Tommy is not going to be joining the team the moment everything is solved because I think that would be too soon in the second one, or in the third movie, he would definitely rejoin the team and actually be a part of the team because big threat of third one. And I think that's how it would be a... That's how it would work. I, I, I just think that it would... they The team and themselves would need to take time. Jason would be ready for Tommy to join, but I think the team members would want... To have a little bit more time and i didn't flesh out what the other characters would be doing i only mildly touched on oh yeah kimberly would start having 
a hinting at a romance with Tommy, and that's because, like, that's the relationship in Power Rangers. I didn't mention what happened with Zack, Billy, or Trini, because trying to work them in the story, which would be dedicated to, um, to Jason and Tommy, was a little bit harder. And, yeah, I just, but again, this is just broad strokes. This isn't going into every single plot point. If I went into that, maybe I'd have something for Zack, Billy, and Trini. But as of right now, sort of the main focus relationship I wanted to hammer hammer down was Tommy and Jason. Because that was the main sort of thing that I wanted everyone to fully... That's what I really wanted to establish with that relationship. But with all that being said, what were your thoughts on the pitch? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Were you indifferent to it? Whatever your thoughts, post them in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell whenever a new pitch this video comes your way. Until next time, I've been Mr. Eli Mack, you've been the audience, and I hope you all have a great rest of the day.